Hi there and welcome to Get Indie Gaming. Today we're carrying on our regular look over a handful of indie games seeking funding via the Kickstarter platform. Coming up, we've a city builder, a visual novel and something unlike anything we've seen before. Prior to this, let's take a short while to recap how last month's picks did against their funding aims. Well, it was a mixed bag. Cerebral has a short time left to go and yet it won't make its 278,000 US dollar target. Same goes for Eden's Last Sunrise, that too was unsuccessful. On the flip side, Vulpine, 303 Squadron Battle of Britain and Genesis Noir all bested their objectives and have secured their funds to take the projects forward. And with that, let's check out our top 5 picks for Kickstarter February 2018. At number 5, The Lost Cave of the Ozarks. First up for February and looking to secure a relatively modest sum of one and a half thousand US dollars, as this video goes to air, it's well on its way to reaching that particular goal line. The Lost Cave of the Ozarks is a gorgeous looking hand painted puzzle platformer that will have you hunting for and unearthing dark secrets from within a long lost cave. The game will feature an interweaving storyline across three different characters from the 1880s to the present day. We've spent some quality time with the demo and so far, the work in progress is looking compelling with perhaps the odd little area of frustration which is typical within the early phases of any game development. The puzzles we've seen are inventive and the hand-drawn artwork and audio are especially strong and offer a real sense of magic and mystery associated with the hidden cave. With the campaign set to finish on March 18th and a timeline for the launch looking to be in the region of early next year, this one may be very well something to get nicely lost in. From the UK, one-man developer James Degan, Hellscreen kicks off its campaign this coming February 27th and is looking for £25,000, which comes roughly to US$35,000. On the face of the footage, Hellscreen looks en route to offer a fast-paced, low-res FPS with plenty of clever features and interesting design subtleties. The most obvious being the visually different and yet pleasing mix of cyan and red art style that provides a nigh-on perfect visual juxtaposition and must have taken an age to dial in so flawlessly. In other areas, we can't help but feel the influence here of the classic retro titles of Doom and Quake, and also the wonderful shadow of the sketchbooks of H.R. Geiger. The red-blooded skyline that covers the play area, the bluish-grey hue on the stones, pillars and walls, it all rather pleasantly comes together in one eerily looking sight, wonderfully offset by the amusing muzzle flash and the driving soundtrack. Another interesting development comes from Degan's use of a rear view mirror, something we've yet to see in any first person game that on paper adds a huge amount of information to aid the player in terms of its environmental and spatial awareness. We're keen to see how this addition gets used and will be also interesting to see if other developers look at similar mechanics within their own FPS systems or any other first person experiences. Expected in February 2019 on the PC and possibly the Switch, we think Hellscreen could do rather well within its Kickstarter. It takes a special FPS to grab our attention and so far, Hellscreen ticks all of our boxes. At number three, Once Upon a Coma. Having already almost doubled its funding target, with, as this video airs, at least 20 days to go before it wraps up March 17th, Once Upon a Coma is a follow-up to Coma, a much-loved Flash game from Thomas Brush, whose recent indie game work was the rather impressive Pinstripe, currently rated a 9 out of 10 via the Steam Online Store. Somewhere in the region of eight years in the making, you once again play as Pete, who, having awoken from a coma, finds his hometown of Reddington is overrun with odd-looking creatures, feral children, and a total lack of any grown-ups. Playstyle-wise, the game is a straight-up old-school, simplistic Zelda-inspired adventure that combines hack-and-slash mechanics, monsters, and collectibles. Aside from the main plotline, the game will feature a number of side quests and missions, including a hunt for Pete's best mate's coma cards, a card game that tells the story of the world, its monsters and characters, whilst also giving you magical abilities. Expect it this coming October. Stretch goals include a Switch port, additional levels and perhaps additional ports onto the PlayStation 4 and Xbox. 
At number two, foundation. The first project from the team at Polymorph Games, Foundation is a medieval city building game that's hoping to raise a little under 60,000 US dollars. It's been in development since early 2016, with the team building a new engine from scratch aimed at facilitating a community driven approach for additional content creation, be this new buildings, characters, and even additional quest scenarios. The player will assume the role of a lord in an uninhabited land and is tasked with creating a settlement, growing an economy, and keeping the population happy using the land's resource and space. The city building element puts us in mind of Sim City and the Settlers, although the real appeal for fans of such games will no doubt be the lack of a forced grid building system. This upends many of the standard design options for the city building genre. With an open plan design aesthetic, players should be able to grow and build their cities however they wish, much like those of medieval times that tended to grow organically. Stretch goals include a map creation tool, advanced visual effects and a DLC which will feature witch hunting within a Germanic setting. Additional stretches will be announced if the game reaches more than $100,000, which as this video comes out is a distinctive possibility. With a pre-alpha coming in April and early access slated for Q4 this year, Foundation looks highly polished and innovative. In Other Waters promises a sci-fi narrative adventure quite unlike anything we've seen before, and takes place within a strange and unknown alien planet's ocean. Coming from Gareth Martin, and looking for a little over 30,000 US dollars, this one will hit the PC and Mac early the year after next. As we've mentioned earlier, you haven't seen or played anything quite like this with its tactile interface of a sonar system, together with associated instruments, and having played through the available demo thus far, we're suitably impressed. In in a fine, subtle twist, you play in other waters not as the central character, let's call her a marine biologist, searching for her lost research partner, but as the AI associated with her diving apparatus as she goes about her hunt. Centred around this ever-growing tactile interface, you don't so much see the world rather than look at the blips and shapes on the sonar. However, this doesn't really matter as the biologist expertly describes her environment that's also displayed on your on-screen readout in more detail. The truly clever part of this game is how Other Waters activates your imagination in lieu of additional on-screen visual stimulation. As we often say, this won't be for everyone, although having played the demo, it's well and truly got us fired up. This is something very, very different and goes against so many trends of modern game design. We wish this one well and are very happy to place it at this month's number one. And with that, we're just about wrapping things up for this episode. As always, if you choose to back anything here in this list, please only pledge what you can afford to lose. As with any KS campaign, there's no cast iron guarantee you'll be able to get to see your reward, as campaigns can and do fail from time to time. And with that rather sombre note, many thanks for watching. Hope to see you all again here soon for more indie game videos.